The design tech department was created to leverage Cornell's existing and unique strengths to foster collaboration and innovation across design, engineering, biology, computer science, medicine, arts and sciences, and the built environment. What began as a pilot program that set out to test a new model for teaching, research, and making at the intersection of design and emerging technologies has now become a very exciting multi-college department operating across two campuses and bridging fields and faculty across the university. Design tech importantly fills gaps in high demand areas such as product interaction and digital media design. Within our areas of focus, we offer design plus environments, design plus interactions, and design plus materials. So how do you scale from the molecular all the way to the architectural scale, non-trivial? We have now chips that basically have 20 billion field effect transistors on a chip. I do design at the molecular level, so we have basically developed these particles that we are now injecting into cancer patients in order to do therapy. So the particles are five to six nanometers in size, which is basically the size of one of these fats on a chip. The question that I'm asking in my research is like, how does the molecular structure of material have to look like at the scale of the human body or the scale of building, the material will perform the function that it's supposed to. Covering these different length scales all the way from the molecular to the human scale, architectural scale, that's the challenge we are trying to address. I'm interested in wearable uh, human interface. The reason I say human interface is that the clothing we are wearing is really the most intimate interface. One example of a fiber optic technology we have developed as part of a wearable device. Shoes with the smart fiber optic technology by having this kind of real-time feedback to help people doing underpronation, overpronation, and possible lower body injuries. We are very optimistic about the future of this kind of fiber optic based uh, wearable technology for human well-being. Embroidered sensors will provide a very reliable respiration pattern used for other kind of health uh, monitoring parameter. Athletes, firefighters, people who have a disability and just physical and mental differences. How can I support them uh, by providing uh, improved design wearable interface to help people tackle real-world issues, push the boundaries of fashion design. The hand of design, when it's done well, can be invisible, so we might not notice how important it is until it's wrong. <laughs> but I think it's actually really important to understand how to do it right so that when things really matter, we, we have those skills to bring to bear. So many of the things that we use as devices are interaction limited. Like the main thing that is limiting us for, from using all the possibility of the technology or the service is the interactions. I particularly work on interacting people with autonomous systems. One really great example of interaction limitations are autonomous cars. We have cars that can figure out where they are in the world, look at the world around them without anyone else telling them, like image the things and drive through the world on their own. But it turns out when those autonomous cars are driving the road with other human drivers or around pedestrians, they don't know what to do. If I make a gaffe, I usually know because people will react. And that actually helps me understand what I should and shouldn't do. Machines aren't paying attention to those like reactions that people have. And so they aren't picking up on the local norms um, that help them behave better. So one of the things I'm interested in doing is collecting the norm-enforcing behaviors that people have and then teaching machines to be sensitive to that. So one of the fundamental questions that drives my research and work and also my teaching is how might buildings and their integrated 
material elements behave more like organisms do in their natural environments, responding and adapting uh, to a changing context. The project is looking at the relationships between architecture and morphogenesis and the role of context or environment uh, and mechanics. And so we're looking at these concepts across three different systems in biology, uh, from plants uh, to brains to the heart, uh, to start to distill a set of design drivers and rules. Uh, because in, in nature, materials, environmental context, geometry, form, history, event, program, all of that is inextricably linked. And we think that's a pretty powerful and ecological way uh, to think in design. A new department means there's a new ed educational mission. And so the mission in a radical way is to break down silos. We have these well-defined disciplines and we don't look to the left or to the right. Well, it turns out we cannot afford to do that anymore. The, the problems we have today are so complex. We need radically different approaches to education so that students are not only deep in a particular area, but they are also at least knowledgeable enough so that they can converse across a broad range of disciplines. What is actually amazing in this program is that it's collaboration, but with whatever you want, you know. Um, you can collaborate with material sciences, but also with biology. Like, it's, it's collaboration as like the big word. There is no limit. There is no boundaries in with who and how you can collaborate with other departments. It's almost as if we get more agency in the way that we design, because we're thinking about material processes, we're thinking yeah. about the aspects that typical architecture firms don't have to deal with on the daily. This program gives you more of a voice mm -hmm. to address those concerns. I believe that some of the best designers and architects make problems, um, and, and then they solve them. We are in the midst of a massive paradigm shift where we're seeing the fusion and integration of the biological, the physical, and the digital, where the relevance of design as a synthetic way of thinking across multiple relationships, uh, the ability to work through that complexity to formulate a plan uh, and a path forward is a very important element to uh, addressing some of the, the key sort of questions and crises that we, we face. It not only is the future, it's, it's the now. I mean, it, this is the type of teaching, this is the type of research that we need to be engaged in.